hello everybody okay we are going to have lakshmi with us today lakshmi narendra who is our yoga therapist working with our members for over 7 years i will wait for her to join um, and then uh, we both can start talking about uh, her experiences of teaching yoga for people with parkinsons hi lakshmi hi good morning like yesterday <laughs> we will just try to find each other so nice to see you okay uh, so my first memory of seeing you was uh, actually i don't remember the first time because uh, when you were all doing your yoga therapy training um, i had come to give a presentation at yoga vahini so all the whole batch was there so i want people to think of it as a very interesting time in our lives i had just started parivartan maybe few months ago maybe a year ago and uh, i had gone to saraswati our yoga teacher saying that can you help us can you help members with pd uh, giving some yoga she said sure we have the first vaidya course in fact from chennai graduating very soon so why do they anyway have to do an internship with neurological issues so why don't you come make a presentation to them and then we will take it from there so uh, saraswati was very excited i was and we didn't know what it would lead to that was so new i mean parkinson's was new to me also i was just one year into the ngo um and then all of you had come the whole batch i think maybe some 15 of you or 12 of you the whole batch had come with the, 20, how many 25 <gasps> 25 of you yeah, the whole batch had come to pranik healing home in annanagar and we had uh, hand picked like some 12 members um, to be part of the yoga program and we were barely like 20 members that time in parivartan now we have over 250 uh, but of course how many of them sign up for yoga is uh, an issue we'll discuss soon so they had all, they were all sitting on one end of the huge hall and all the students were sitting in the center of the hall and then saraswati gave like a calming practice and the whole room just settled down i mean i'm saying settle down but i can feel the energy was so high that time so that was a great start i thought and then your batch uh, i think like uh, six of you signed up to uh, you know work with us help us out literally with all our members each one was assigned two members while working with your batch i think over the years i think you continue to remain with us like one constant from 2015 until now and i think lakshmi i mean i don't know if it will be an exaggeration to say this amongst the yoga teachers i know like generally here and others who work in pd field you must have seen the most number of cases with parkinsons in fact a wide variety that too uh, from early diagnosis to much advanced stage i know that you got a student at a very advanced stage in the very beginning of your teaching journey with pd um, so it has been a very learning experience i think in a way you and i have grown together with parivartan <laughs> i have understood parkinson's better um, i'm sure you have to in in terms of how to give therapy and we have also understood how to work with each other with different personalities so it has been a journey literally an ongoing one at that thankfully uh, so i will stop talking right now i've spoken enough i want to ask you um, what was like i'm i'm sure the disorder was new because it's new for most of us this is an april parkinson's month hence we are doing a lot of these videos to increase awareness what i would like to again and again reemphasize here is it's a second largest neurological disorder but not many have heard of it and unless there is somebody in the family we know with pd we have not even heard the term parkinsons so how was it for you were you familiar with the disorder was it new let us start from the beginning yeah um so first of all yes uh, so the, the so we have this common chat uh, in our community as well so when sarah said yeah. everybody else message that's the same thoughts that were coming to me of us meeting you uh, for the first time we had come in and all that so uh, i i would also like to talk about that a bit maybe yeah. a little but first to address what you just um, yeah. asked me uh, so uh, in therapy we are usually made to uh, yoga sees as per the uh, uh, in uh, ayurvedic uh, through the ayurvedic lens yeah so we're looking at vata pitta and kapha uh, through those lens we try and address or we try to assess uh, an individual um, so this is totally different we do not go by the condition 
say parkinsons or some other ms or uh, any other condition so that is how we were trained we had almost finished our training when uh-huh. we stepped into parivartan and we were uh, introduced to our respective students and so saras had already uh, given us a good background whatever we needed to know prepared us so we knew what to expect so to a large extent that helped and uh, you know it is much more simpler when you look at it from ayurvedic perspective because you don't get boggled down by the uh, 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 the condition as such yeah so um ayurveda looks at uh, parkinsons as a vata vitiated state so uh, so everything we try and do in the uh, in our practice is to reduce the uh, vata levels whether it is activity whether it is uh, lifestyle whether it is uh, diet so we give it a, a wholesome approach uh, uh, with practice breathing chanting so there are many many tools that we use Yeah. Correct. Let us go one by one. So I want to first emphasize on one thing. Now there is a, at least when we started working on yoga and PD, I had very little expectations as to what the yoga will honestly bring to the members because I was seeing the disorder for a year and I was like, oh, this is like a significant issue. They can't walk, they can't talk, and then there's a lot of depression, anxiety. um and i didn't know how to help them with pd so one of the with power yoga right so one of the things i was desperate was okay i know yoga i know saraswati let's ask if she can help and i had not even taken the teacher's training course yet and i had very minimal expectation from what would come out of it so we'll gradually get to that so now around then and when we were working together i think we looked at lot of research being done or published on yoga and pd can you tell me like yoga vahini the yoga school where both of us belong to comes from the tradition of krishna macharya yoga mandira now can you tell us for people watching and even otherwise for our members also how is this kind of yoga different from any other style of yoga that you know people with pd or even otherwise they practice um so just to give you a background uh, when i started off um, i also started say in around i think uh, it was 2004 2005 when i started uh, my journey in yoga uh, so uh, what happened this was just for health reasons that i joined uh, a a center so which was giving training in uh, literally i would say a group class would offer group classes and teachers from all different traditions were coming there uh, so i could i had the uh, uh, the uh, the gift or i was fortunate enough to have practiced all traditions and tried out and then came uh, krishnamacharya tradition wherein we focus a lot on breath and do it so it uh, if you look at a group practice or a individual practice when you compare with any other tradition and our tradition krishnamacharya tradition you would see that our movements are much slow uh, compared to others and the reason is because we focus a lot on breath breath our movement starts when the breath starts our movement ends when the breath ends it's all about the breath breath guides your practice uh, the reason why uh, krishnamacharya uh, mentions is so that we prepare we start preparing the breath right from the first movement wherein we are we know we are taking the practice towards the uh, end of ashtanga yoga which is uh, i won't even talk about samadhi i would say dhyana uh, meditation yeah so how can i train my so yoga is all about uh, the mind how can i quieten the mind right from the first breath so we believe that when the movement becomes uh, a lot without focusing on the breath then we tend to vitiate vata and that is exactly what we do with uh, parkinsons we try and control the vata we do not want to agitate or vitiate the vata so which is already vitiated in a condition when the student walks in so we want oh. to uh, pacify we want to uh, calm the person oh, calm, calm the person so okay every, that is how i would say i would define our tradition krishnamacharya tradition as which completely focuses on breath okay okay so there is a lot, so let me just uh, because i think this is the crux of everything that's going to be discussed from now on so i think our focus is a lot on breathing and uh, our favorite quotation is uh, if you can breathe you can do yoga uh, from krishna macharya because lot of members would say oh, I, you know i can't walk i can't lift many things how can i do yoga so the the catch phrase is 
if you can breathe then you can do yoga um also lakshmi so you're saying every movement has to begin and end with the breath like the movement can't be separate uncoordinated with the breath so when you do your movements coordinated with the breath gradually your mind calms down and hence you can see a person with parkinson's where there is excessive tremor and movement to the body they'll automatically settle down that's what you're saying okay um that is great i think with this as a basis now we can discuss we don't have to take names of your students and you know their identities but we can generally discuss uh, what was your first experience like was it little uh, you know um, overwhelming was it too much because each one is different with pv right so how was it for you initially uh so um it's actually like you know uh, when uh, i i would i also want to add that literally like i it's not like i chose the condition it was like the condition me yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, i was <laughs> so i was put in this state and i that is very powerful uh, when yeah. you think it it's less powerful but when something chooses you uh, that is very yeah. powerful so i i think we should try and do our best like um, uh, be there do our best in whatever way possible and that's exactly what i did yeah yeah so um, so um we tried like of course from uh, uh, saraswati uh, vasudevan our teacher she uh, hand held us through the initial uh, session yeah. uh, we used to keep going back to her uh, asking her about what the condition was and because each individual is was so different and they could say the condition say tremors we would just say tremors but each one would show different signs of tremors how intense uh, when what triggers uh, things like that which really mattered and to understand more the uh, hats off to her for being so patient uh, being taking us through uh, the uh, you know city all the sessions was very helpful um and of course it was overwhelming um but you know what the i i would say the students were so sweet they in fact they made us feel at home and they were like yeah. so sweet when they would come greet us and i still have uh, them like even though there are a few uh, who are old and not in touch but i do get messages from them uh, they wish me on new years they wish me uh, you know whenever whatever happens they knew i had a son who is going to just come out of uh, engineering and so how is he doing what is it so you know everything it was like a family and which really helped i, I think both ways so we are talking about a teacher i won't call myself a teacher i think first we are students for life when we are in this journey and it's a student and teacher who grow together and that's yeah. exactly what happened through uh, the sessions yeah okay now let us talk about some specifics yeah so you're saying it was a bit overwhelming but i think the disorder chose both of us <laughs> i mean to work with the disorder of both because i didn't know what parkinson's was before i met mr vasudevan and the whole journey started so both of us didn't have any experience in the family also there was no personal connect like that i think the cause chooses us and then we just have to roll with it and i'm glad i have you on this journey for yoga <laughs> seriously now let us discuss some specifics lakshmi because i see the idea is very nice right there is this disorder which is incurable and there is this style of uh, therapy which focuses a lot on breath now let us see what came out of it i will tell you some of my um, perceptions and you can add to it okay let us take the example of tremors and constipation tremor is where you have uncontrolled movement of any part of the body mostly it's reflected in your hand your upper body and sometimes in your legs and sometimes the head also shakes so there is an excessive tremor and one complaint that most members with pd have is they have severe constipation now uh what i found is yoga has helped like our therapy sessions have helped members reduce in both can you expand on you don't have because i know the techniques are not the same i know the um, manner in which pd affects one person is different from the other but can you tell how did you work what aspects of yoga did you work with which helped in this alleviation of these symptoms so first of all like i said um, looking through the ayurvedic lens uh, it is a vata vishayated state both uh, whether it is tremors uncontrolled movements so the quality of vata or vayu is like uh, uncontrollable it's very light it's cold dry so that's exactly what you can see in the condition wherein the uh, mind is all over the place there is there is tremors uncontrollable uh, movements uh, wherein 
So I would look at constipation also uh, as a vata vitiated state because there is dryness in the uh, intestine, in the bowels. So that is the reason. And we also look at the mind of a person. So there is a, um, a, a tendency for a person to hold their emotions. They do not get. So there are different levels at which we try and assess a person, an individual. And uh, first of all, we try to relax them because there is a lot of agitation within. They, they're not comfortable. So tremors, usually when you look at uh, the mindset, you're not comfortable in a situation. And that is when the tremors are very aggravated. Uh, yeah. Like, for example, you're going to go into a social uh, event. You're meeting a few people, say a gathering, marriage, whatever, and uh, meeting new people. People who are going to notice you having a tremor or slightly different, they may feel a little uh, intimidated by that. And uh, maybe they've not had their medications on time. There are things like they haven't slept well the previous night or have not had their uh, uh, meals properly on time. Uh, so things, especially ladies who tend to miss breakfast, they have a feeling they need to send the husbands off to work or the kids yeah. off. Uh, so that's the reason they tend to not have medications or have meals on time, which yeah. aggravates tremors. So we look, look into every aspect and try and figure out as, and help them understand. More than anything, it's just for them to understand what, what little things. They're very, very simple things like eat on time, have your medications on time and spacing of medications and food, uh, say one hour before uh, or one hour after, whatever is convenient. Uh, things, very simple things which can really make a, uh, a, a, a remarkable change. So we just bring all that and diet if you're looking at constipation, as to what can help, like a lot of uh, uh, lubricating stuff like uh, ghee, uh, uh, oil uh, baths. Uh, 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 I have even heard people having a spoon of coconut oil, virgin coconut oil, uh, oily first thing, which helps. Uh, also, uh, we have some uh, Ayurvedic friends who help out in um, uh, mentioning. But again, I would say, please take all this with uh, some caution. I would want you to go to a therapist, figure out whether it, yes. it is suitable because... Um, if you are diabetic or if you have uh, hypertension, it will not be ideal to take that spoon of uh, oil or uh, ghee. Uh, in yeah. I would want you to go to a uh, therapist, figure out what is your prakriti, what, as we call in Ayurveda, what is your constitution yeah. and accordingly uh, figure out what would suit you best. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, Lakshmi. So you're saying it is not just about, see, I like what you're saying about, it's not just some movement, some asana you're giving, and then as a yoga teacher that fixes the symptoms. You have to understand them as a person in whole, understand their whole day, their schedule, their habits, and then you tweak here and there things. Um, as appropriate to their condition. Custom it's very, very customized. That's the idea I'm getting. It's very customized. What are you eating? When are you eating? How are you eating? All of this would make a huge difference. But sweetheart, I also need some yoga jargons here <laughs> because this is becoming a little bit like Ayurveda, right? So tell me, while, see, this is very good to know that you can't just say go do yoga for Parkinson's. Now, what is it? It can't be like a physiotherapy, right? Uh, so there is a huge difference between go do physio, go do yoga. And I tell this to both to members. We highly recommend they do physio. We highly recommend they do yoga also because both of them fulfill two different roles. Now, tell me in yoga asana itself, like there is breath, there is lifestyle. All of this comes into how we treat a member in our community. Now, can you talk a little bit in terms of yoga? What is it that you're doing, like in terms of movement itself, like that Saraswati must have told you in the beginning, right? Focus on this, don't focus on that. So can you tell me something like that. Okay. So um, we have two concepts in breath, which is inhale breath and exhale breath. So uh, inhale breathing usually energizes a person and exhale breathing focuses on relaxing, calming the person. So initially, we use a lot of exhalation uh, focused movements because the person comes a little agitated, disturbed, not okay with the condition, maybe has not accepted the condition. Um, so there are a lot of things that he's dealing with. So at that time, when we are trying to focus on a hundred things or to find a solution may not work uh, really well. So we want to calm the system, calm the mind first, and then start working. 
so we start wo- working on long exhalation focused movements so maybe some forward bends maybe some mild twists um, uh, long chanting uh, so drawing the lower abdomen as you exhale is a uh, a point which is extremely helpful the which also works on your uh, vital organs uh, works with constipation Uh, so works at different levels uh, uh, so uh, when uh, we are talking about this is just very in simple terms that i'm trying to explain exactly. but it has different layers of meaning and why something is given for some condition and things mm-hmm. like that. correct i think what you're saying is very important here like sarasvati also says this all the time and i've heard you also say this many times that you can't say this asana for this symptom do this so that will be okay um i think uh, i don't know i have to emphasize again and again our yoga is so customized we can't even call it yoga you have to call it asana pranayama practice and that again depends very much on the individual and as you said focusing a lot on breath on exhalation and some movements based on that forward bending so what changes that will come in that person will depend on that person so we can't say oh just because they're doing this their constipation will go uh, reduce or the tremors will reduce now let us talk about some tangibles that happen lakshmi because some experiences to me with your students and with even with other teacher students have been just eye opening so just i couldn't imagine you know i think i became a believer in asana pranayama practice i saw after i saw the impact on members and i thought okay this is something that i can learn maybe um so one thing okay i'll just maybe give one example um there was this one student of lakshmi's uh who i think it takes most of the members some time to get the breath the deal with the breath yeah they're just doing the movement they're just you know opening their arms or bending and asking you are we doing okay are we doing okay you will you keep, all the teachers would keep saying no focus on the breath inhale do that exhale do that it takes them some couple of sessions to get that but once they get that i think the the difference is like dramatic can you note i can imagine i can already think of one or two circumstances where it was just like that they just changed like that and then symptoms also reduced can you tell one or two examples that pop up in your mind with your students particularly absolutely there are many many that come to me uh, first one which is right on top is i just had uh, yesterday a gentleman who came in with uh, yeah so uh, yeah. with his wife in fact she he has introduced her as well to yoga and uh, so he came in uh, i think 6 years back when i first saw him he saw an ad that you had put on uh, yeah. in newspapers and yeah. uh, so he came into yoga vahini uh, uh, saying that i want to uh, start off and uh, so he had undergone a bypass surgery um, a, a hernia uh, a surgery just three months back um, he had i think he was into pd first 2 uh, years then Uh, so he was talking to me about this whole thing and he was telling me how he was doing kapalbhati on a regular basis so he's been doing yoga since quite some time and so first thing we asked him to do was to stop why because that would agitate the vata even further so we didn't want so that the reason we made all the uh, uh, and even hernia it's not helpful for hernia because you need to wrap them in in to make sure the is not aggravated so if you see same thing may be done by 10 people but two people will into trouble but the others will not because each one is so the makeup is so different so it is yeah. for us to understand what is helpful and what is not and accordingly uh, guide them so uh, he, he actually came with his son he could not walk he, he had first to, time no i remember yeah he feet uh, wherein he yeah. could one step without support so he wanted his son uh, and he would feel it seems when he would sit behind the uh, two wheeler he would feel like he is flying off behind the yes. so he had to hold yes. it tight and that's how yeah. he came first time to yoga vahini yeah and then yesterday he just mentioned the same incident and he said look at me ma'am 6 years back i came with my son today i'm in and then slowly he started coming on his own then yeah. yesterday he came all by himself get bringing his wife along who was not yeah. well so he was a support he was oh, so, he, so the yoga was for her he was the caregiver now exactly. <laughs> exactly. He said, i can see the transition ma'am look at yeah. how transformed nothing 
but breathing he kept talking about how only breathing has helped him yeah i think he is just in a very unusual case of extreme sincerity and dedication to practice which we need to also as yoga teachers bring in in our practice he is in a different level i think i don't know if he's inspirational for me or if he just like overwhelms me he's amazing so if you stick with breath and you work with it because i know that in pd his condition has gone through a lot of deterioration in a sense it's gotten worse over years in last 5 6 years medications have changed new symptoms have come but he keeps steady his practice so i think that keeps him going and mentally he's much more fit and physically also he's much better i think um do you okay i want to mention one or two incidents that come to my mind right one not directly your student but another sheila student in fact he was depressed for the longest time he had some personal issues and then he had lost something in life and it was just eating him up i am depressed i am sad i am depressed that was his constant notion and he would come to class and then he would do whatever the teacher was telling and then he'll be like you know i feel okay when i do it but when i go back home i'm still upset and it went on and on for months and then we even had a session with saraswati to say okay how else can we help him we are doing the best we could but he kept at it and kept at it at one point there was a sudden switch i think he actually came back and said i'm actually feeling better i'm no longer hankering for the same you know uh, holding on to the same loss i'm actually feeling better and this actually helps me so i think in terms of mental well being can we talk about that and yoga a little bit lakshmi i have seen the dramatic change like in uh, ranjini student also he was depressed he was properly depressed when he came for class and then he came out of depression you know soon after he started the class what happens there uh, so i think it's the same student you're talking about who wrote a poem uh, for uh, sheena that is also another student okay <laughs> sheena is another student wrote a poem for her yeah he was like so excited his creativity juices were like like flowing <laughs> yeah so first thing uh, some of them are uh, self motivated so it is their shraddha yeah. like for yeah. the yeah. 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 or who came in yesterday yeah. uh, their shraddha is still like uh, uh, unbeatable they they have that shraddha they believe that this system is going to help them and they yeah. that kind of an attitude for sure they're going to do their best and uh-huh. like the uh, sutra in our yoga sutra which says just keep coming back to it again and again yeah. reverence with a, a positive attitude with a lot of respect so that actually helps that is exactly what has happened in most of the students who really don't know what to expect but they have been with the breathing because they know you yeah. that it has helped them so let me give it a go but without losing hope let me just be in touch with it that has helped and to go beyond the condition can you allow so what we do is we try and help them connect to something which is beyond the condition something they love uh-huh. uh, so uh, it is a space of anandam uh-huh. we call in uh, yoga which is pure bliss which is unconditional there are i'm sure all of us have some things in life when we indulge in that it can be a, a hobby can be uh, you know a uh, 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 art form uh, it dance or uh, uh, music uh, a musical instrument that you play can, cooking uh, anything some uh-huh. people stock market for that matter you know so uh-huh. anything that they love it's coming from a uh-huh. deeper space which actually so uh, i have even heard students say that my trem i don't have tremors anymore when i'm cooking i don't have tremors yeah. when i'm traveling or meet my uh, loved one uh you know yeah. so looking beyond the condition connecting to something beyond the condition so that can uh, be the devata it can be a deity it can be nature it can be sun it can be moon it can be anything that that whatever they connect with exactly so it is called shubhashrayam so shubhash uh, is something positive that you keep connected uh, to it may not be the same i think for everyone that's why a teacher provide that who can try and figure out what is the best yeah. uh for you yeah let us just share whatever stories for the next 5 minutes what comes to our minds um you know unfortunately most of these members initially who we started out with a lot of them have passed away 
and and that too during covid time so it's been a bit hard this one one and a half years we have lost a lot of older members who are part of the initial bunch uh, so one of your students started singing again so her voice got better uh, there was another student his constipation really reduced and there was uh, one member who was in very advanced stage of pd he could barely walk or move this was much the most early part of your teaching i remember you uh, you making him lie down and do some basic chanting and breathing and i could just feel his body just settle down and you know once they finish that 10 or 15 minutes of practice when they get up there is like a brightness in their face and they walk away i mean when i say all this even i can't believe this can actually happen because i've seen it happen so many times again and again and at one point roshni used to have these group classes and i know for a fact that when the member walked into the class he had so much tremor he was holding on to his wife the walking stick the wall it was all he was all over the place and it was a group class for both the member and the caregiver so spouses husbands wives all of them they would do practice for an hour and when he and when he left the room he was walking independently all calm no tremors feeling completely fine so i think not i think when you have a condition like parkinsons where there is so much of agitation physically in terms of movement and in breath this immediate impact of connecting with the breath connecting with something which is higher and hence the body calming down is extremely obvious but i'm sure it is the same for all of us you know for absolutely every understand that anandam space that space of your yeah. that space of complete um, quietness a healing space is within each one of us it's not out there yeah. it is yeah. just that uh, an outside object is helping you connect to that space within yeah so yeah. the first thing is to help them see that uh, the quietness is within you the calm makes healing space yeah. you can you connect to that how do you connect to it is just so if you give a glimpse so they say that yeah. a taste of the amritam and yeah. you are like for life you are stuck with it you there is no exactly. no you don't want it anymore you want more and more of that so every day yeah. can you help um, that's exactly what we try and do mm-hmm. i remember when you were sharing the stories i remember one uh, um, uh, again the i think one of my first students who never knew he loved writing so you be you yeah. remember he used to have this journal writing wherein he started writing a few lines here there yeah. and then he started reading making sense yeah. wanting to you know uh, write a little more on that topic and he started doing that half a page so i was kind of uh, strict uh, and asked him to put the date and write half a page <laughs> on a regular basis because i would see them only once a week so i wanted to know that this is happening every day so he would write half a page to one page then it became two pages and he said that you know what uh, i am going to make this into a book and i'm going to gift you I, you know it came to that and yesterday yeah. when the lady who came in who was feeling really low um mm-hmm. her husband had got her and um, i was just talking about how uh, prana is important and mm-hmm. the center of the chest stands for the prana sthana and so there is there should be no movement or when we are trying to cover restrict constrict the chest space mm-hmm. the prana flow is uh, restricted is not happening as per required yeah. so the moment she heard that i could just see that she was sitting up straight yeah. and yeah. then, it was not like the earlier the breathing the breathing was so much more powerful yeah yeah in the attitude in the body language exactly exactly so while all of this sounds very promising and rosy i also should say that we had sufficient amount of challenges working with the members also so now let us focus in the last few minutes a bit on what does it take to teach somebody who has a incurable disorder and which only gets worse over the years so couple of things that we noticed since we started working together is one is the attendance is like really bad um nowadays we do online and that has its challenges of course which we will uh, hopefully figure out what to do once we all start meeting each other in person more than what we are right now uh, but in person when we have a meeting it takes a lot to schedule a meeting like parivartan staff will call the member make sure he understands what time what day where 
and then that member might forget so we call again just before the date and remind and the teacher and the student don't live close by so both of them travel a long distance and come and the teacher would sometimes reach the center and the student will just like 10 minutes before the class will call and say sorry i can't come today or they won't even call and they'll just not show up this non showing up has happened and cancelling of classes has happened innumerable times and what we keep trying to tell the teachers you can add to this lakshmi is the challenges that pd person itself i will talk from the side of the member you can talk from the side of how it is for the teachers um they need a caregiver to come with them they need a vehicle to bring them their medicines have to be working so they can actually walk that time uh, and they should be in the right mind frame to show up for the class if any of this one element in this goes away then they can't come to the class now if repeated occurrences like this happen which happens which is going to happen as a teacher how do you deal so firstly we have to be self motivated we we just need to feel that you know and it is not that we are coming there to teach or uh, you know for the student it is for our own growth as well so if you are a teacher you are growing as well you are learning as well so can you is that a good enough reason for you to be there that's number 1 secondly i feel your practice is extremely important your as a teacher yes as, as a teacher, teacher uh, to be because there is a lot of energy exchange that happens uh, so to be um, cheerful to be present to be able to deal with whatever is coming up so we really don't know so usually what happens is as a, a new teacher you want to see progress every day every day so uh, change yeah. practice every class exactly so you want to see the students stand up the next day and uh, you know uh, remarkable change but that is not true that is not possible you have to and each person each student like you just mentioned some people are able to connect because of their shraddha right from the first day some people are not but can i somehow facilitate that the student is able to stay with the uh, practice for longer so i remember days when i had to uh, call on a uh, on a day <laughs> is uh, i remember i used to uh, ask them to send me whatsapp messages uh, saying i have done my practice just one thumbs up and any other challenges that they have so if you have not done your practice please give a reason so they would give a reason it is just for them to reflect on whether the it's a valid reason or uh, was it just an excuse so there is a lot yeah. of uh, you know uh, self work that happens for a teacher to understand yeah. where are you coming from there are you coming without expectations can you just land up there accept yeah. the student the way the student is and take mm. the student to the next level mm. on mm. yeah i think this while it is true for teaching anybody asana practice it is much more challenging with a condition like this now another huge um, challenge which we face in pd is okay they are sincere students they come they practice all of it works right but then they they their condition only gets worse over the years right so you do like even as a community support group we do what we can we provide this we advise we do but it after a point there is only so much you can do there is only so much yoga can help they only it is not a very um, reaffirming thing they get better but they also get much worse over the years uh so what is the kind of again i think i'm sure you'll say the same thing but how did you deal with it because you have seen a whole spectrum with your students you've seen them doing okay then you've seen them deteriorate you've seen some of them pass away you've seen a whole spectrum with some of them so how how is it for you then so it is important to uh, understand that i think first and foremost the relationship between a teacher and a student mm -hmm. establish that so once that I, you know of the student uh, my first student who is uh, all literally bedridden right now and not able to uh, so he is still in touch he is saying yeah. that i want to come for a session so yes. look at that spirit i i don't exactly. know if that even happen but yeah. to, uh, you know have to hold something as a hope yeah there is a so there is going to be so we really don't know what is going to happen tomorrow but yeah. can hold that Uh, shraddha that bhavana that hope 
wherein you know so he is doing whatever breathing we have taught him and yeah. i have cases wherein they were not able to connect with the breathing at all the person with dyskinesia uh, mm-hmm. the earlier student who had come in mm-hmm. so uh, after dbs uh, mm-hmm. surgery, so it was important for him but he could connect with his breathing at some level and i got a message yeah. from saying that somewhere something i would say first and foremost the relationship between a teacher and a student yeah. Be- yes yeah see i think that is where uh, i think it is true for most therapies you know the therapies work well if the person getting the therapy bonds with the therapist well it could be with physio also i hear them say my therapist is very good nalla pandra the master sometimes i don't know if the therapy he is giving or she is giving itself is uh, you know beneficial to the member or it's like a feel good factor with the physiotherapist whatever it is the relationship and the trust in the therapist is very important and i think it becomes more so in yoga somehow it's a very enduring it becomes almost like a psychotherapist counselor slash yoga therapist sort of a role it's no longer just teaching asana pranayama you know there are a lot of times when i hear things about my members from you guys right you would say something like they shared this with me they're going through this personal problem i think there is this issue in the family which you know on a day to day basis they don't spend one hour with us every week but they do with you so it becomes like a confidant and like a psychotherapist also at some point absolutely i think both ways the teacher the connection teacher good in relationship and the practice it just for them to understand so you need to convince them you need to somehow help them relate to the practice as to how helpful so when they start seeing those little so you remember off times how they the yeah. intensity of off times mm-hmm. there used to be time when they were into this uh, condition for say 15 uh, years plus and they wouldn't be able to move a finger during off time it used to be that intense and breathing was yeah. not possible but just by strengthening their practice during the other times when uh, you know they are fine during their on time the off time intensity reduced to a large extent and that but from many many students yeah yeah i think people with pd should be hearing this when you do the breathing practices during off time the intensity actually comes down without the medicine they actually have felt better this is like a dramatic we don't see much studies of this anywhere in fact you know but we have seen this repeatedly happen with members um lakshmi uh, finally we are also out of time any particular challenges personally for you in terms of teaching and how you figured it out in your head okay this is what it is going this is the issue how do i deal with it something that you have uh, experienced uh, so as a teacher it is extremely huh? challenging it is very draining um it is uh, uh, like you know because you need to be present there to uh, to facilitate all the time with 100% energy so there was a time when we used to ask saras who is a, a good teacher or a student that relationship would uh, is it 50% student 50% teacher how should the relationship so she would say 100% from the teacher and 100% from the student okay can i ensure that i am there with my 100% so that is exactly what we need to understand as teachers to be present there and to know that if there is an improvement so so what we call it is something it is a life changing improvement say they are able to sleep well their incontinence is better they are swallowing they have swallowing difficulty so they are able to eat better yeah they are, so these are all and they are able to walk better balance issues are not there they are able to uh, be independent uh, they are able to dress themselves uh, on yeah. their so these are life changing uh, uh, improvements you, you just can't call them like a progress or like you know yeah it is remarkable and for that you have to really be at it and wait, be patient so your challenge has been to just stick with it be completely present and although it can get a bit overwhelming especially in a group setting with lot of members with pd i think a lot of self practice that has taken some time absolutely and do then, something before pranayama before the session pranayama after the session very important yeah yeah otherwise it's very difficult yeah 
anyway um this is really been nice chatting with you lakshmi although we chat almost every week and even otherwise this is really fun uh, so thank you so much uh, for joining us today and i think we'll have shorter sessions like this on we can focus on at least like one aspect because there's so much work that was done and to like decode all of that in like a 30 40 minute conversation is not possible uh, but we can take like one aspect work with one member maybe talk to a member online we could do things like that so this has been great and i hope this will be again an enduring relationship with you and uh, parivartan so and i know that you're training a bunch of newer crop of yoga teachers now almost three or four of them uh you have been mostly helping them teach our members now so there is a second line developing thanks to you and saraswati so this is really good news for our community so once we have our center up and running you guys you guys can all come visit and maybe have sessions there as well absolutely looking forward and uh, it's so beautiful to be a part of parivartan uh, family yeah. because you know it is so so satisfying uh, i yeah that come in for everything uh, just if we are not out of time i would like to share this experience by one of my tutors uh, she knew that my son had come out of uh, engineering and uh, uh, so you know she just had that i didn't know that she had actually made a note of it her son was is actually uh, um, in an agency where they recruit uh, engineers in and you know in the four firms for different multinationals so she had this the moment son said that i'm going into these engineering colleges she said that you know i have my um, uh, a student for you can you just so she yeah. and she said that you know i have referred your son so beautiful where can yeah, yeah. that kind of a relationship yeah yeah, yeah. so so grateful touched by all the love yeah yeah and as you rightly said sometime back do the idea that we are helping or we are teaching is very misguided they are the ones actually helping us i mean despite the fact that they can't hold food in their hands despite the fact that they can't you know do much of self care but the energy and the positivity most of these members carry oh my god it is nothing short of amazing really um i i can just go on talking about members all the time because there are so many i mean they have changed my life for sure for sure if there's anything life changing for me it is working with the members oh my god i can't even begin oh that will be another whole writing i'll have to do couple of books on it exactly. this is one member i will finish with because it is so amazing he would come alone in his late 70s very unable to walk will take the public transportation and come for speech therapy sessions at parivartan and i would like panic he is like all over the place huh? walking so i i went and held his hand and said sir did you come alone he said no narayana is always with me why should i think i am alone <laughs> i was like are you oh, sir this is too much <laughs> are you in a good deal and everything <laughs> and that too, you know so spontaneously he's not like is thinking to be like a wise crack or whatever right but that's what he truly believes i am not alone i am not suffering uh yeah really each one of them are like this i mean i don't know who is not inspiring in the whole community absolutely i'm so so grateful for the space yeah. so i would yeah. never say i'm the one offering something because i have received so much <laughs> that yeah. yes yes thank you lakshmi i think we can talk offline about what we feel about members on and on about each one we can right. you know go back into a flashback mode but now i will stop this thank you so much da thank see you. you soon take care bye bye thanks thanks for all the good work you do bye